1765, two Quaker botanists from Philadelphia, William Bartram and his father, John Bartram, visited the British colony of Georgia and discovered a plant living on the banks of the Altamaha River that they'd never seen before. In a few years time, William Bartram, the son of John Bartram, went back on a long tra trail through coastal Georgia and northern Florida, and he revisited the, this small population of trees or large shrubs and collected seeds. Within 50 years, this wild population on the Altamaha River had been completely wiped out. In fact, it is extinct in the wild. They named the plant after John Bartram's good, good friend, Benjamin Franklin. So this is Franklinia is the genus name. Altamaha is the species name for the river in Georgia where they found it. It's a monotypic genus, meaning there's only one species in the genus. And it is a member of the T family, TAC, that includes camellias and stewardias and they tend to have pretty active nectaries, so these flowers are slightly and very sweetly fragrant. Franklinia begins blooming for us in mid-July with a flush of blooms and continues blooming all the way past the first frost in October. This is an amazing bloom time for a small flowering tree it makes it one of the most valuable small flowering trees for the home landscape or the arboretum. The tree is in full bloom now as we speak, even after the uh, Hurricane Irene knocked a lot of the flowers off. But not only do we have the blooms happening right now, but we have numerous flower buds in the cluster in each bloom. These are flower buds waiting to burst open. These are flower buds waiting to burst open. The tree is covered with flower buds at this late date in late August. These flowers, after the flower petals drop, they produce a dehiscent five-valved capsule. They, these capsules will, will stay on the tree even into the next growing season. You can see it's very intricate. The architecture is absolutely stunning in itself. It's a beautiful, piece of engineering. And within this capsule are the seeds, probably 15 or 20 of them in each of these uh, f capsules. And they do remain viable for more than a year. This shot gives a good example of the multi-stemmed nature of the plant. Frank lineas grow to about nine meters high, which is about 30 feet, maybe 31 or 2 feet. They love to be on um, well-drained soil, but with plenty of moisture available to the roots. Think of a sandy loam in Georgia, but with, the, with a river running next to it. Ours planted here at Marsh Botanical Gardens is a great setting for it because it's well-drained, because of the topography that slopes away from it but also we have an underground spring that pops out within 10 or 15 feet of its root mass. So there is water available even in the driest summers. This drought intolerant small tree prefers an acid soil. So it would be important to test your soil pH before planting. Plant as a bald and burlap, or sometimes you can find them in pots, at the better nurseries. This is, not, this is not a very, very rare plant, but it's not common in the trade either. You won't find it at the big box stores. Oh, there's a honeybee now. So look for the, in the better nurseries for Franklinia.